So hi guys, in this video, which I think is going to be the last one, we are going to fix some bugs that we have in our project. And I was thinking about like trying to solve the, the problems and just show you guys a solution. But I also thought that maybe uh, it would be interesting to for you guys to see the whole debug process. So some of the problems I already know why they are happening because I I, I saw my initial project and I thought, okay, I forgot to do some things and that's why we are having some of those problems. But some other ones that um, we have in this project, I have no idea why they are happening. And so what I'm going to do here is that I'm just going to debug in real time the project and try to get to a solution. I hope <laughs> I can fix all of them in like uh, this video. So we'll see. And maybe I can add like those um, timestamps. I don't know how you took call it like where you can just click and go to the correct place where I have the where I'm talking about the solution so you don't need to be uh, see the the whole debugging process if you don't want to so the first thing that we are going to solve and this is a problem that I know why we are having it is that uh, invaders are shooting missiles from like weird places and they are not actually weird places um, I forgot to do something when we were creating the invaders and just to explain what what's happening is that we are destroying the invaders when uh, despite we are destroying the invaders we are not uh, changing the position of the invaders in the list and that means that despite we are, we destroyed the invader the the position that the invader had when uh, it was destroyed and i i don't even know that if we are stopping everything when we destroy the invaders because actually we are deleting the clone and if we are deleting the clone then we don't have a problem but the problem here is that the last position that the invader had when it was destroyed it stay it, it is still on the list and so where the when the missile is choo choosing a random position to use it's also considering the, those positions so here what we are going to do is that when we actually destroy the invader we are going to change the position on the list to minus one and then when we choose a random position when the missile chooses a random position it's going to choose, a, choose positions that are different than minus one so that's what we are going to do so the first thing that we are going to do is when we destroy uh, the invader we are going to set we are going to set the replace the items in the list by minus one and we are going to do that here not where we are destroying the invader because we might destroy the invader but then we are still waiting and stuff like that and if we replace the position here this can all uh, still run afterwards and it will just change the position back again to some other um, uh, value so what we are going to do here is that instead of repeating this forever we are going to repeat this until the invader has the costume of the explosion which means that it got destroyed so we are going to repeat this uh, until the the costume number of the invader see until the costume number is equal to seven is equal to seven which is the explosion one yeah so we are going to repeat this while the invader is not destroyed it's going to be updating his own position on the list but as soon as he is destroyed we are going to replace his own position on the list so replace the item invader id of invader's position with not the x position but with minus one and we are also going to replace on the y position with minus one so let me see if we can see it here. Uh, let me just show you the lists. Uh, player was destroyed in the meantime, but yeah, you see that you have some minus one just appearing here. So these are the positions of the destroyed invaders. <coughs> Actually, let me see if they, yeah, and they match three, three, yeah. So now that we have that we are um, changing the position to minus one, what we are going to do is that on the missile sprite, we are only going to use positions that are not equal to minus one, meaning that we are only using position of active invaders. So on the missile, when we are choosing uh, a position, 
So we fact here we pick a random, né? yes, we pick a, a random value for the position. And what we want is that we want to select a position that is not minus one. So what we are going to do here is that, let me take this. Oh, I can remove this. This was from the other test, I forgot. So what we are going to do here is that we are going to repeat the set selected evader ID until, we are going to repeat this until the position of the, um, the X position of the selected invader ID and the Y position is not uh, minus one, or is greater in this case than minus one. And we can use the repeat block and repeat until. And this is not a very efficient way, I know, but we don't have any other way, I think, to actually select a value from the, the list without being minus one. So we are basically, it's going to be generating random numbers, like picking a random number, and changing the selected invader ID. And if it's minus one, it's going to select again. And if it's still minus, minus one, it's going to keep trying. So we are going to repeat until, uh, is that until the, um, the value of the selected, selected invader ID of the invader position minus one is greater than minus one. So in this way, we are on, uh, still using the entire list, but we are going to ignore when we get a random when we get a value that it has minus one, and we're going to keep trying generate generating new values until we reach a value that is greater than minus one, meaning that we are actually using a, a valid position. I don't know if we can actually see if it's working. Only if I mean, can only see if it's not working when because if we kill a lot of invaders like this, okay. And now we have another problem that we are going to solve, but it seems to be working because missiles are only coming from where the invaders are at. So we don't have any missiles coming from here where we kill the invaders. So it seems to be working. And this was one of the first errors that we had in our game. Now, we still have another problem. And I don't know if you saw it here, but it's uh, really noticeable if we destroy like the left invaders, the left columns. Let me try it here. So. I'm going to destroy all this. And now you see that the invaders are not actually touching the edge on the left. You see? And I was like, okay, why is this happening? And it's really strange, but what's happening is that despite we are killing all the other, destroying all the invaders on the left, it's the, the original invader, the one, the original sprite that we are using to create all the clones, is also moving with the other ones. And it's also touching the edge and doing everything that the other ones are doing. So let me show you here again that uh, now I'm gonna not maximize this, but you know, do this. Yes, and I'm gonna do it. These entire columns. And now, if I show you, you can see that we have this invader, and this is the original one, and it is actually the one that's touching. Is always touching the edge or the left edge. This means that even if you destroy all the columns on the left, it would be the same because this invader will all, always be there, uh, detect, uh, colliding with the edge and moving the invaders back to the other side. So we need to solve this. Uh, and how are we going to solve this? First, it's really strange because I thought that if the invader was hidden, it wouldn't detect uh, the collision with the, the edge and that wouldn't be a problem. But it seems that it doesn't work that way. Uh, so another the option that we have here is to actually don't move this invader. So this invader won't be able to move. And if, if we keep this invader static, and in this case, not here, but we can put it somewhere else. I think we are putting the position correctly. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, it doesn't make any problem. So we can have it. Oh, it's here. It's in, uh, on the original uh, position of the invaders. So we need to find a way so that this invader does not move. And how can we do it? Because the problem here is that we are moving the invaders. And now I'm just, I'm already in debugging mode. So we are using the invaders. We are moving actually the invaders. Where? Where are we moving? Here. When I receive start, that's the problem. 
because since we are using the we are moving the invaders when we receive a message and this is something that i talked about in the other videos that we don't have an easy way to say okay i only want to receive these messages on the clones or or i only want to receive these messages on the original sprite and we also don't have a way to say okay is this a clone or not that would be like awesome i don't know why they didn't implement that here because you can create clones you can start as a clone you can do it as a clone but we don't have an option to say okay is this a clone because that will be easy okay if this is a clone then i'm going to do all this but if it's not a clone then i don't care so here uh let me see how can we solve this i mean we need to find a way that when we start moving the invaders when we receive the start uh, method we and even on this one when we receive the start method We shouldn't be doing this as well because we are. You might be using the. Um, you'll be using the original sprite as well. Okay, which is really strange. So maybe what we can do is that if we are already using the invader explosion here, so that we had, when the costume number is equal to seven and we are using this, maybe what we can do is that we can change the original sprite costume number to seven. So the original sprite will be already destroyed. And then when we receive the start method, we say, okay, we are only going to do this if the costume number is not seven, because the invader is destroyed. In this case, it's not destroyed, but it is the original one. So it might work. Uh, let's try it. So here, when we create, when I receive create, this is uh, the only one that receives this is the original one because all the other ones were already destroyed. So when we receive the create, I'm going to switch the costume to invader explosion. And then when we are moving the invaders, we are only going to move the invaders if the costume number is not the explosion. So if um, I, can say, I can say less than, yeah, I can say less than. We are only going to use this or run this if the costume number is less than seven, because seven is the costume, the, the invader explosion costume. And let's try it. Now, if I say, okay, yeah, now the original one is here. And, but it's also shifting down, so we cannot shift down. We're going to do the same here where are we shifting down the player it's here when i receive shift down so when i receive shift down we are going to do the same so this is not a very efficient way but i'm not seeing a better way to do it right now so if the costume number is less than seven if we shift down the sprites and do all, all the rest so let's see now I can show the sprite, the sprite is there. And yes, now the sprite is not messing with anything. We also need to make sure that this sprite does not move down because this sprite would also, if it, if it was moving down, it would also trigger the, the losing condition here at the bottom. So that this way the sprite is just there. And now, let's see here, now I can delete this column of invaders and they would need to touch the edge. And yes, okay, now it's working okay not a problem solved now we have another big problem that you can see here is that the invaders are moving farther and farther apart from the other ones and this is a really strange problem and my first thought about this is it seems that the invader that is touching the edge is, is the one that is moving farther and farther apart from the other ones and why is that it seems that the invaders move more, one more step or one more unit than the others. Let me try it again here just to see what's happening. And this happens uh, a lot more when the speed is greater. So, yes, you can see that this invader is like moving. Oh, the actual the invaders are not um, aligned anymore. It is really strange. Now that one is now this is the one that is uh, 
touching the edge so that's the one <laughs> we also need to change it <laughs> okay yeah uh what's happening here let me see so where are we touching the edge uh, when i started the clone when i started the clone clone, 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 clone. okay where are we <laughs> touching the edge of the screen touching the edge i see it. yeah so we set the invader speed to one we start a forever loop we change the x by invader speed and when we touch the edge we invert the invader speed and broadcast to shift down and yeah and shift down just do this it's okay And invader speed is a, a global variable. I mean, it's a variable that is shared by all the invaders, I think. Yeah, it is. So why is this... Hmm. Why is this invader speed not um, correct? No, the invader speed is correct, but I think the invader... Let me see if I, because this is a lot more noticeable when you have like a high speed. So, yeah, you see, it's always the one, the ones in the top. But then it's not only, this is really strange. Because it's not only the inviters on the edge, but it looks like it's the entire row that's moving a little bit more than the other ones. Hmm. Okay, this is a tough one. Uh, because it's only on the first row and I think it's on the first row because it's probably the row that it's actually touching the edge. Let me just see if I use just one row. What happens? But then again, it also seems that it doesn't happen on this one, only on this side. Hmm. It's really strange. Let me see how I solve because I I think I had something like this and I solved it some other way. I repeat it till touching the edge. Okay, so forever change x by invader speed. I'm trying to understand because we are changing, we are forever, then we are running a loop and we are changing x by something. And it gets to a point where one of the invaders will touch the edge. But it changed the x before, so it touches the edge and we invert the invader speed. Then we broadcast shift down, doesn't matter, so just... My problem here is that maybe it's like... Touching two times. What I'm thinking right now is that it seems that the inverter is moving far and far apart. So it seems like it's not uh, inverting the speed in the correct way. And so if it's not inverting the speed, it still moves one one more time. It seems that when while all the inverters, when the first one touches the edge and tells everyone to invert the speed, it seems that all the other ones invert the speed. So this, this invader is here, and it moved here, it touched the edge, all the other ones are moving this way, and this one is either not moving, and so that's why it becomes farther apart than the other ones, or it's even moving one, one more time the other way before inverting. That's also really strange. Maybe it's not moving 
maybe it's not moving because here because the other ones this might not get ah because we are i know because maybe we are changing okay let me see maybe let me see if it works so maybe we are going to change x again by invader speed because here it will be already inverted and the other one because since it's easy but this would oh that's why it's only on the first row because all the other invaders that were before that one so this this one solves all the other invaders that were before that uh, are before that one are using the the previous speed that we have okay okay so this is a big problem let me see no it's not <laughs> now it's even worse <laughs> now we have like all these rows yeah, yeah, yeah now it's even worse yes and uh, now we cannot change it Okay, so I think now what's the I think I know what's the problem, and that let's say let me show you here what I'm thinking about. What I'm saying the problem is is that we have all the invaders that are using one variable that has the value of the invader speed, and all of them are using the same value. Now what happens here is that they are all 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 of them are moving to the right, and so they are all moving, and when they do this, let's say that this is the first invader, and that's how probably the collisions are working. I don't know if they work like top to bottom, but it should be something like that. This is the first invader that detects a collision. And I'm saying this because all of these are also on the same line, so on the same position, so would also detect a collision, but only on one of them is going to be the first one, which is this one. And so when this one detects a collision, when this one detects a collision, it changes it inverts the invader speed which means that all of these invaders that were before them already moved all these invaders that were before them already moved but because we are running this each of these blocks is running on each invader and probably this is running okay change x of this invader it's not touching change this one change this one change this one okay it's changing all of them and when this touch, when this one touches, this one's already moved to the to the right, and this this didn't move yet. So we invert the speed here, and the next time these are going to run are already running with inverted speed. So they they just go to the left, while these ones only will only do that the next time. And that's the problem that we have here. Now, how can we solve it? Uh, how can we solve it? So, I think the better way to do this would be with messages. I mean, and changing also the invader speed to be maybe a message, but we see maybe a message because if we send a message, then all of them, including the one that touch the edge and all of them before we will receive the message and repeat the movement okay let's try it so maybe what we need here is to have a new message when i receive a new message and we're going to say we don't have update direction no we're going to create a new message we're going to call it update direction which to say invader direction but yeah okay uh, update direction and here is where we are going to do is where we are going to invert the actual direction of the of the invader so here is where we are going to do this and then we are going to also not this change x again inside this one and Yes, and here we just broadcast the update direction. Hmm. Sorry, I'm not very convinced yet, yet but let's see. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, that's not it. Okay. Now what's happening? 
when I receive a plate that touching the edge, one of them update. Let me see if we broadcast the plate direction and wait. No. Okay, so that's not it. If touching the edge. Okay, so now they are moving to the right. They touch the edge, one of them touched the edge. He says he broadcasts the update, not the create. He broadcasts the update direction. Let me decrease the speed so it updates the decrease direction. We invert. Oh, I know. I know why this is happening. The invader speed is a global variable. It means that all the invaders have are using the same variable. All the invaders are using the same variable. So if all the invaders are using the invader speed and all of them are receiving the update direction, it means that all of them are inverting the speed. So the first one calls and invert speed becomes negative. The second one receives the message and it becomes positive and negative and positive. And so ones are moving to the right and ones are moving to the left. When ones move to the right, they are also touching and this is calling this a lot of times and it's all crazy. Okay, so we're gonna to need to create a new invader speed. For this sprite only, we're gonna create an invader, uh, already exists, sorry, yeah. Uh, so the name variable, this is going to be like the old variable and we are going to create a new variable called invader speed for this sprite only and yes and now we need to change all the invader speed old by the invader speed okay here yes here invader speed and here invader speed and here invader speed where else are we going to are we using the invader speed Maybe we are not using anywhere else, I think. Let me see if I do it the old. Oh, I still have three. They really need to have like a, a proper way that I can see, okay, we still have like three references to this variable and they are here, <laughs> you know, like. Oh, I have no idea where. I still have three uses. Where? Are we changing the invader speed anywhere else? I don't think so. Can I start as a clone? Blah, blah, blah. Ah, invader speed. Yes, of course. Here. Invader speed. Invader speed. Invader speed. BTY. Okay, so now I can delete this one. And yes. Now let's see what we got. Yep. I hope so. <laughs> okay, let's try with um, a higher speed because that's where we can see if it's actually. And yes, they are moving okay now. Perfect. Okay, once again, it was all about uh, variables for all sprites or this sprite only, uh, more of the same. And okay, so these were like the main problem that I remember. Let me see, I think I, I know, I, yes, I think I had some notes with all the other problems that we needed to solve. Let me just see if I have it here. So, it's invaders, fixes, weather clone, deleting the weather clone, second, okay, invader do not move the original sprite, okay, only running the start when invader type is greater than zero, yes. Oh, this was also a good solution, but okay. Decrease the amount of change y is minus seven. Yes. Okay. So now let me see if we detect any other problems while we are playing the game. Uh, <laughs> the game gets really difficult to play like this. <laughs> so here. We see. I think now we have a problem with the player laser okay it's still 
uh, destroying, sometimes it destroys more than one inviter, as uh, you see. So it touches one inviter and then it destroys more than one. Hmm. And this is probably because we are seeing the co uh, detecting the cohesion on different places. <clears throat> you see that sometimes the laser uh, destroys an inviter and it continues and then only gets destroyed uh, on the second inviter. And I think it is because we are detecting the collisions on different sprites. So the laser is detecting collision with the inviter and the inviter is detecting collision with the laser. And what happens here is that probably the inviter is detecting the collision with the laser and the inviter changes the costume and do, does what it needs to do. But as soon as it changes the costume, the laser is not able to detect the collision because it already changed. Maybe something like that. I think I had, yeah, but I added the wait 001 seconds here. So it shouldn't happen anymore. Maybe if we increase this time, I don't know, let's see. We cannot increase a lot because otherwise it will really strange the effect. No, still, it's still happening. Hmm, maybe it's not the problem. I don't know, because if we put like 0 0.1, you know, if it's like a really high uh, value, then it gets strange. Oh, now we have another problem that I just <laughs> saw it, but okay, that's another one. No, oh, maybe we can have 0 0.1, I mean, it's not... Oh, it happened again. But maybe it's happening because of another thing that I just remember. <laughs> this whole pretty thing of doing the laser explosion, we have a problem because if we change the costume to laser explosion and we wait 0 0.2 seconds, it means that as the inviters are moving, we are going to, the laser gets, the laser hits one inviter, it stops, changes the costume, but the inviters are moving. It means that if an inviter is close enough and the speed is high enough, it gets while we are waiting for 0 0.2 seconds and the laser is having the explosion, the clone of the explosion there, the inviter might touch the explosion and also destroy itself. And this is really pretty, but maybe it doesn't work really good, so uh, really well. So we need to change that as, as well. So maybe we can have something like this. Let me see if it happens again. Now sometimes the laser. Now the, sometimes the laser is just. Oh, it happened again. Yeah. And we have another problem. It seems that the laser is colliding with inviters, but is not destroying them. Sometimes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's also another problem. Okay, so now we have two problems to solve. <laughs> Uh, one of them is that it seems that the laser is colliding with the inviter and not destroying the inviter. And it seems like this is the reverse problem. Like I said, uh, if we have both of them, so maybe now the laser is hitting the inviter, it destroys itself, but it does not give ta enough time for the inviter to detect the collision because the, inviter, the, the laser is already destroyed. So it's really hard to... Um, to manage this collision stuff, but let's see if I just add a, a, a weight here, if it still happens. Okay, now we are seeing if we if we shoot an inviter and uh, it doesn't destroy. But so far, yeah, so far I think it's okay. We don't have the explosion effect, but Uh, this seem to uh, have solved both of the problems, maybe? Not entirely sure, to be honest. Uh, let me go back to the inverter. But I don't want, I don't like the having like 0 0.01. It's, it's too long, you know, it gets a little bit weird, the effect. But if I decrease the amount, probably it will solve now that we have both wait times on both sides hmm. it seems to be working and i thought i had a problem where i was shooting and uh, the missile was not appearing but 
I can't see it now. I don't know why. Oh, I think it happened again. It destroyed two invaders on one go. It's all about the wait times, I think. I can't see another reason for this. I think it's all about the collisions. And the invaders are not uh, increasing the speed. They should be really fast right now. Let me see what's happening. Oh, I know what's happening. That's another problem, sorry. Uh, that we had when we solved the other one with the invader speed, we created this one, which is now only one of the invite only the invader that's actually being destroyed is the one that's um, increasing the speed. So probably now we need to let me see if I have some update direction. Okay, we're going to need a new message so that we can think. I mean. Uh, we are destroying the invaders, and when we destroy the invaders, we, we are changing the invader speed, increasing the invader speed. But now, since each invader has its own speed, and we need to ma maintain the value of all those speeds in sync, and we are not doing it now because we are killing the invaders, and we were changing the speed of the invader that we were destroying afterwards, and all the others stay the same. So we cannot call this on the, only on the destroyed invader, but we need to send a message to update this. So let's send a message, let's call it update speed. Okay. And here, if invader count, blah, 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 we broadcast here the update speed. And now let's try it again. Okay, and I think they are getting faster. Yes, now they are getting faster. Still have a problem with the, the missiles. And the inv destroying the invaders. And I think it's about this. I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I'm not really sure if it is about the wait seconds. Because it seems that what's happening is that one of the collisions is being detected, but not the other one. So it happens that a laser hits an invader and gets destroyed, but it doesn't destroy the invader, or a laser destroys an invader and it doesn't get destroyed. And it seems like the collisions are not uh, correct. On the other hand, we cannot send messages because we have a lot of invaders and we cannot we don't have a way to say, okay, this was the, the invader that we hit. Yeah, I mean, it's all, only like waiting, you know, and before switching the costumes. Because let me see something. If we are stopping. Yeah, no, here, yeah, we are waiting. We are only moving. So when it hits something, it just stops moving. So this is not a problem as well. Mm. Okay, I'm going to start like, let me see, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 and we'll see. It works like this. Okay. Oh, I think it happened again. Really? Yeah, it's still happening. Why is it still happening? <clears throat> so the invader, not the starting invader, I think that's working uh, okay. What's happening is the laser is destroying the invader, but it's not destroying itself. So it's the laser that's not able, not being able to detect the collision with the invader. Hmm. Why is that? Is it because of the sprite of the um, of the collision of the invader explosion? I don't know, maybe the, the laser can, even with the explosion, the way, but we change, I think we changed the, the explosion of the invader, right? I remember that we had some problems and we changed, oh, maybe we didn't change it. And we still have that problem. Okay, let me see. Um, let's go to the Pisco app and create Sprite. Let's see, import, browse, I want the invader, 
and if I direct pull, replace. Yes. <laughs> Since the laser is really small, is there any chance that might, I don't know, hit the invader? We change the explosion and, for example, the laser stays in this right here or something like that. I don't know. I'm going to do not here. I'm going to change this okay, white so that there is no way that the lasers, not this one. Uh, there is no way that the lasers can get um, a space where they can be without touching the sprite. Uh, so something like this, and something like, I don't know, like this. <laughs> okay, it's really strange, but I mean, whatever. It's just going to appear for a few seconds, so not a problem. Um, <laughs> this, is, this gets really strange now, so maybe I should do something like this. No, but now it's not centered, so it should be something like this, I think, yeah. Yeah, now that I don't have that problem, I think. Let me see. Also, like this. And here, I'm gonna do this. I don't like it this way, so I'm gonna probably just delete these ones and do something like this. And uh, like this, yeah. something here because still have some space okay now this is the explosion I don't know let's see uh, not save this pixel yeah export this uh, downward zip whatever I'm just gonna downward zip and let me see Okay, now I have this sprite and I'm going to replace this one. So I'm going to remove this one. Sorry, I'm going to remove this one, upload costume. Where do I have this? Oh, I'm going to copy this to the to the other folders. Create space invaders. And these are the videos. Wait. Um, Here, sprites. How is it called? Sprite zero? Sprite zero, yeah, okay. So let's call it Invader Explosion New. Uh, invader Explosion New, yeah. So we had the Invader, <laughs> we had a hold, we had the Invader Explosion, and now we have the new. Okay, whatever. So this is a new sprite for the explosion and let's see oh now I can't uh, yeah, cut of the name yeah so invader explosion we need to change the costume because I think we are referencing the costume by name that's probably because why it's not yeah no it's okay Okay, so far so good. No, <laughs> it still happened. Oh, is it because the invader is moving? I'm not stopping the invader, right? Yes, I'm not stopping the invader, right? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe that's because of this, so not here, but this one. And if the invader, maybe it's because of this, because if the, um, the laser is colliding with the invader, but if, if the invader keeps moving, even if we wait and we do all this, the invader is not touching the uh, the laser is not touching the invader. So if we touch the laser, we're gonna st stop everything, stop all the other scripts. Oh, but if we stop all the other scripts, it's gonna stop this one as well. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this. No. Nope. Sorry, I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna put this here. Yes. Okay, this block is like really start to <laughs> be really 
big, you know, and has a lot of things going on. I don't like it a lot, but let's just try it. And I'm going to put this 0 0.01 and the laser again because I don't want I don't want this waiting seconds as long as these ones. Let's see. Okay, now the explosion stays in place. That's correct. And the uh, explosion sprite is really awful. Yeah, I know that. I need to go back to the other one. Yeah, but I think that was the problem. Maybe we don't need to to wait so much time for the the explosion because it looks really weird. But first of all, I think it's all. First of all, I'm going to take this again and just import the, the original one. So the invited explosion. Yeah, the invited explosion. Okay. And now maybe we can decrease this 0 0.1. Let's see if it looks better this way. Yeah, okay. Oh, this get really slow. I don't know what's happened. Probably my computer that yeah, I don't know. Okay. This is it. We don't have that problem anymore. Now the only problem that we have right now is we had to remove we had to remove the um, the laser explosion sprite. We don't no longer are using it. So and that's a problem because that's what I was saying. We get the laser is hitting the um, the invader, and now we have two options. Oh, I was thinking, okay, maybe I can go back and put the animation and just change the time so that it doesn't collide with anyone. Let me see if I wait. If I get this really fast. Maybe it won't be that awful, and we can still see it, and... Oh, yeah, we can still see it. Oh, I don't know why it is so slow, but... Yeah, it's really fast now, so maybe I think we won't have a problem of invaders just um, touching the explosion while they are moving. Because the other way to solve this would be, like, a really... A complex way to solve this just to have this explosion I'm not gonna do that would be to when we destroy when the laser hits the invader we would store the position of the the laser on a variable like the X and the Y position and then we have a new sprite which would be the laser explosion that would we would instantiate and use that position to put, to just show the sprite and disappear that would be the other way to solve this, but I think it's too much work just to have that uh, small effect, which doesn't look that good anyway, so... And this is it, <laughs> I think. Um, I think we are not missing anything, I'm just going to hide all these sprites, and... Yeah, I think the game is finished. Now the computer is really slow, I cannot show you According because I'm exporting the, the last video, <laughs> so the computer get, is getting really slow. I don't know why. Uh, I think it's because of that. Uh, but, yeah. Oh, it just happened. No, I can't, I can't live it like this. It just happened. The explosion of the, <laughs> of the laser just um, hit another invader and killed both invaders on one go. And I don't want that. So, okay, let's try it. I mean, it's the last thing that we are going to do. And uh, just stay here if you want to see how, how I'm going to implement it. And just try a few new stuff uh, to do it. So, like I was saying, uh, instead of having like this costume explosion, and uh, we are not going to wait 0 0.05, we are going to do this. Okay, instead of having this zero waiting for this and having switching the costume to the laser explosion, we are going to have a new sprite that we're going to use for the laser explosion. Let me see, where is it? 
laser explosion. And now we have this sprite. And my idea was that we are just going to create a clone of this sprite. Yeah, create a clone of this sprite and it's going to position itself on the position that we need to store and then disappear. Something like that. So when we can say like, okay, when I start as a clone, we are going to move to a certain position. I'm going to move, not this one, we are going to use a, a variable so we could use something not a random. Oh, we can use the laser. Oh, okay. Maybe it's easier than I, than I thought because I forgot that we have this go to and we can say go to the laser. And since we only have one laser on screen at a time, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so when I start a clone, as a clone, go to laser. Then we show the sprite and we wait for, sorry, we wait for 0 0.2 seconds and we destroy the clone. <laughs> Basically, it's that, and we delete this core. And now I'm gonna hide this one. And now on the laser, instead of using this, we are going to create not a clone of myself, but create a clone of the laser explosion. Okay, let's see. Oh no, because, because the laser is a, is a clone as well. So when I'm saying uh, go to, when I'm saying um, go to laser, it's actually going to the laser sprite, which is on the top probably. When I default four, yeah, it's probably somewhere here on the top. You can see it because it's really small, I think. Yeah, I don't know. But the explosions were here. So probably the original sprite is there as well. So we can't do it like this. So let's create a new variable for all sprites because we need to access on different sprites and we call it i don't know explosion i'm gonna try something new here i know i don't know if it's gonna work let me see join we can join something okay and then we can oh, we can. then we have the letter but we cannot unjoin okay i was thinking that maybe we could just add the x and y position to a variable like text you know and then um, use the numbers on that variable to, to end that text and go back to that text and take the the value of the x and the y from the text but i'm mistaken we cannot do it because we only have like letter one off we don't have like a split text or anything like that i was just thinking stuff that we usually have on other programming languages so we have to create two variables then so we are going to create and make a variable like laser explosion x yes and uh, laser explosion y we don't need to see it and here where we before we create the clone we are going to set laser explosion x to the x position and we are going to set the laser explosion y to the y position and now on the laser explosion, we are going to not go to laser, but we are going to use the other one, go to X and Y, and we are going to use X position and the Y position, and we show, and that's it. Let's see. Okay. It's exactly like what we had before, but it won't destroy the invaders because the invaders are not detecting the, co the collision with the laser explosion. They are only detecting the collision with the laser. And so it, it works. <laughs> it's a, uh, we need to get all this trouble just to position the, the laser explosion, but it's a solution. And so that's it. I mean, uh, I'm not going to add anything else. I'm just going to put the game in uh, the correct state. So I'm just gonna hide all this. So that when we can save the project and now when we go to the project page the game, the game is all empty and that's how we want it to, to be when we start the game so we have something like this and i'm not shooting i need to click here and yes and we can stop and it stays like this but okay so this is not 
it doesn't solve this problem. And but we cannot hide it. I mean, we could delete the clone. No, we cannot delete the clones. Only when we reset, but we cannot get the, the event where we stop the actual game. So it's not a big deal. And this is it uh, about uh, Space, Invader Space Invaders in Scratch. And I hope you liked it. And the my next idea is to recreate again this game. And I'm always using the same game because I think that's how we can easily compare uh, the different engines. And and like you see, it's a really simple game, but we had some trouble with it, uh, implementing some of the stuff, some of the features of the game. And I'll go uh, next to videos. I'll start implementing the game on a different engine. I still have no idea which engine I'm going to choose. I have like three engines here that still use block coding. I'm going to go with engines only that only use block coding. So I have Make Block, Game Fruit, and Stencil. I'm not really entirely sure. Let me see. I'm not entirely sure which one I'm going to use the next. So we have like Make Block. Yeah, Make Block. Probably is the one that I have on my list. And I think like I think it's not this one. <laughs> I'm not sure. X2? No. Products. Coding robot. M robot. Okay, maybe it's not make block. M block, maybe. Oh, <laughs> make. Oh, make block. Uh, it's a M block from make block. Yeah. Maybe we're going to try this one. I'm not entirely sure. I need to just see an overview of the engine first. It seems really similar to the one we just worked with, so maybe I'm, I don't know if it's that interesting or not. It's going to have some differences, uh, I'm sure, but we'll see. Maybe this will be the be uh, next one. I still have, I haven't decided yet. So I hope you like this whole set of tutorials. If you have any feedback or questions or anything, please just tell me. And that's it. Thank you.